Welcome to Devotionals on the Go. My name is Kelly Wenner, and I'm the founder and creator of Soul Strength Fit. If you think you don't have time to dive into God's Word, then this podcast is for you. These few moments will not only allow you to hear the Word of God, but to reflect on it and apply it to your life. Listen, reflect, and grow on the go. This time is for you. The Apostle Paul describes many processes involved in our spiritual transformation. We are being conformed into the image of Christ, Romans 8.29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. We are being transformed by the renewal of our minds, Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And we are being led by the Spirit to produce fruit, rather than relying on good deeds done in our own effort and strength. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. But I say, Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, adultery, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things of the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. reading comes from the book of Ephesians. Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to the hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness.
instructions Paul gives in these verses are lifelong. The Christian life is a lifelong process of taking off the old and putting on the new. It's this transforming process that leads us into becoming people who reflect God's holiness and goodness. Paul is calling us to put an end to actions and habits that aren't pleasing to God and to replace those with actions and habits that honor and reflect God. One way to look at our sins is to view them as addictive habits rather than individual, isolated actions. Which habits do you feel most called to change right now? The word habits is derived from a Latin word which refers to the characteristic attire of religious or clerical order. So this is what a priest would put on, a piece of clothing which represents his commitment to a holy life. We too are to put on habits that represent our commitment to a holy life. Paul doesn't just tell us to stop the actions and habits that were part of our old nature. He tells us to put good habits, habits that represent our commitment to a holy life, in their place. Which habits do you need to replace with habits that show your commitment to growing in Christ? Spiritual transformation doesn't happen overnight. There is no such thing as instant godliness. Conclude your time today in prayer. Perhaps you want to pray for the strength and endurance required to put off old habits and replace them with new habits that reflect your commitment to being a disciple of Christ. Ask God where you may need to change. Ask God where you may need to grow then make yourself willing and open to daily putting on the habits that reflect Christ. Thanks for listening to Devotionals on the Go your place to listen, reflect, and grow. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an on-the-go devotional. And I'd love to connect. Check me out at soulstrengthfit.com to see all that Soul Strength has to offer. I look forward to digging into God's Word with you next time. Bye for now.